Alhamdulillahi wa rabbil alamin 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 wa Full of mercy and compassion, it is always the will of Allah to guide us, to help us in every way, to keep us on al Sarat al Mustaqim, on the straight path that is. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and I bear witness that there is no deity that none deserve worship as a god, as a deity, as a supreme being that none deserve that, nothing in this creation. Only Allah deserves to be worshipped. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified is Allah of all things, who has no associate, no partner, no consort, no sons, no daughters. We say that Allah is alone. Not that Allah is lonely, but Allah is by Allah's own self in the management of the heavens and of the earth. That for him is the creation and the command of this creation. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu and Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the slave servant, or we say Abdullah. Sometimes when we say slave, that word is very bad history with it. <coughs> but the highest station that we can attain is to become servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Arabic in the Arabia it's Abdullah, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad we say he is Rahmatan and Nas, that he's a mercy to all the people and Rahmatan Lil Alameen, a mercy to all the world. Allah tells us of him that you will find in him, that is Muhammad, his messenger, the prophet, that you will find in him an excellent example of human conduct, of human behavior, that he is a model for all of us. And we say also of Muhammad that Muhammad is his, his sirah, his history, his sunnah, his life, etched, or as we say, it's, it's, it's in stone, historically. There's no, there's no one in the history of the world who has more information on their life than Muhammad. His life is chronicled, detailed, and the, the way our life is, is given to us 
historically, those details leave out nothing. They cover every aspect. There is something in our way of life, in the history of our way of life, informational wise in our way of life, through the theorem that is the history, in the hadith, in the teachings of the things of Muhammad, and others, in fiqh, and in all other sources. There's more information there about how man's life is to be lived than any other source. Detailed information. Not only from a historical point of view, but from a personal, community, business, education, as well as spiritual life. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala. I mean, Allah tells us in the Quran, Allah revealed in the Quran to us, I will be even in Shaytan and Rajim, Ya Ayyah Haladina, Amenu, Takallah, Hakka Tikadu. Oh, you who believe, or you who are inclined to believe, to say you believe. Want to believe. Our belief is to fear Allah. To fear Allah as Allah should be feared. Or to say, give Allah the proper regard, the proper respect, the proper consideration. Hakka, truthfully, sincerely. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that his deen is nasiha, it's sincerity. You know, if you want to practice this way of life, or anything really, you have to be sincere. You have to be for real with it. If it's going to take on me, if it's going to do something in the life that you're living, whatever it is, we have to be sincere with it. We have to be for real with it. So in this verse, Allah says, Hakka to call to thee, to call to thee. And don't die unless you're Muslim. You know, I, I hear the imam, the, 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 the khajr, on Friday say that I've heard it so many times. You know, and sometimes we hear something so many times it just becomes mundane. It don't really mean nothing to us. When the Quran, that verse in the Quran says, don't die unless you're Muslim. That actually says, don't die unless you're a Muslim. You know, they translate that submitted. But we know what, you know, we, we know what Muslim means to us. Because we're supposed to be living it every day. We hear it every day. But here, so here's a, a, a verse in the Quran, a caption in the Quran where Allah says, and don't, and don't die unless you like that. So now when you, when, you, when you quantify that, when you add something to it, when you add some, 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 some substance to it, when you quantify something, I didn't say qualify, I didn't say quantify it. You add some substance to it. Substance to it. And you add some substance to that, now how... How is it that a person is going to uh, die Muslim? Or why would it even be necessary to say that? Don't die unless you're Muslim. In other words, Allah is telling us also to be what? To be concerned about them. That's, that's, that's the other part of it, the, the unfed part. To be concerned about them. Now how do you, you have it, to be concerned about death, you have to be concerned about life too. You can't be concerned about one unless you're concerned about the other. And everybody knows that there's a certain time coming when we all meet death. Allah says every soul will taste death. So here's a verse where Allah says, don't, don't, don't go to that, don't, don't transition out of here, as you know you will, unless you must. I mean, that's for, uh, when you heard that, that's enough. That's, that, oh, you don't have to say no more. Really. You can, fit, you can finish the whole sermon the whole day, just put that on your mind, because you don't know if you're gonna make it, make it to your, uh, to your. Uh, you don't know if you're gonna make it to tomorrow. You don't know if you're gonna make it to the next minute. You don't know what you're gonna be, what's gonna happen on today or tomorrow, do you? No. So you have to be. In other words, so you have to be prepared to live, and you have to be prepared to die. How many of us prepared to die? You know, you can tell that just based upon what we do. I'm talking, and now I'm speaking in the community aspect. Where, where are you going to be buried at? Who's going to do your genetics? Where are you going to be buried? I mean, because, you know, right now as a community, we have the, the Muslim community here, uh, even though it's thousands of us, we don't even have a cemetery that we can go to and see all of our loved ones and don't have to worry about stepping over somebody else or 
and all the, I mean, a, a, a cemetery that where the, where, the, where the graves are facing the Kibla. We become assimilated into America so much so that we're, we're just, man, we, whatever happened, happened. So wherever we go, it just go, we just go that way. But we have to, we have to start thinking, acting, and behaving like Muslims. And what do we mean when we say we, we we're not talking about Muslim in the natural, just in the natural sense? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said everyone is born that way. Everybody. So that includes Muslim and non-Muslim. So everybody is a Muslim. They may not understand or accept that language, but everybody is one. Who's not? We can't even say no about somebody's not. We can say they're not conscious Muslim. But this is speaking to the conscious Muslim. One of the, those of us who know we Muslim or believe we Muslim, say we Muslim, and do our best to live the life that Muslims live. So that means when we're a part of, a, if we if we embark upon another land, then we have to establish our life in that land. We can't leave our life to to what's going on every day. Somebody, the Muslim gets sick, he has to, he goes to the hospital and die. We got to call the 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 the, the, the uh, the Christian cemetery, the Christian uh, uh, houses of, of, you know, the funeral home, funeral home policy. You had to call them. Many of us ain't even, many of us don't even have a means, ways and means to to, to uh, dispose of our remains, to get our to make remains disposed of properly. Yeah. What you gonna get wrapped in, shrouded in? What are, what are, what's gonna what's gonna take place if something happened right now? with you and your remains and your life. What's gonna happen? In this culture, you know, many of us, and I'm talking about us that just born here, raised here, been here. Most of us, we got Christian families. You know, and I can tell you right now, if you don't have everything in place, you might go out of here looking like a Christian. If you didn't have nothing in place, you might leave out of here with a suit and tie on, somebody telling you how, how you look, sleep. somebody looking, walking, looking, looking, it might happen like that. If you don't have no, if you don't have things in place right now. Now, what's happening to create this kind of this situation for us? The situation is that we are not connected with our way of life and the way we're supposed to be connected with it. How can you live, how can you die rather as a Muslim if you don't live like one? It's impossible. It's impossible to die in a state you are not living in. I'm just like that's like saying you die in California, but you're in Ohio. Can't die in California if you're in Ohio, all right? That's another state. So I thought I might just mention that. So we're to be we're to, we're supposed to be concerned about them. A lot of the, that that's that's given a lot of the proper regard because Allah is the author of it. And he's already decreed that death is a must. It is it, is, it cannot be escaped. It'll make a difference if you the holiest person on the planet. Death's gonna find you. You're sitting around every every just every minute, every second. There's no place where death is not. No, no, it's, this is not a doom and gloom preaching. We're just keeping it real. So here we're saying we're emphasizing on what Allah says. Allah says, give Allah the proper the respect, <coughs> the proper consideration, the proper regard, sincerely, and don't die unless you're Muslim. Don't die unless you're in your conscious Muslim state, if you're Muslim. Yeah, don't, don't die like that. Alhamdulillah, you are of the When we take on this, this way of life, you, you are signed on to saying and suggesting that you're coming into a, a maturity, a state of maturity. Yeah, when you, when you, when you, in other words, you're, you're, you're subscribed into adulthood. Anytime, whatever you take on consciously, you know, you have to be an adult in that. You have to be grown in it. When you say, when you, when we, as an adult, you know, the children aren't responsible. You know, they don't have to, they have to live the life where we have to live. They don't hear, you don't hear children going around saying, that, 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 that. You know, they, they, they might do it, they might think, but they don't, they're not conscious of that. Like that. They don't have that burden, they don't have that obligation on them. We're responsible for the life of our, our children. 
We're responsible for it. Our life has to bear witness to it and be an example so their lives can form right into it. What's going on with the youth out here? I'm talking about just in general now, the big picture of youth. Their example, their examples are not strong enough to pull them into real life. So they live in an artificial life. They live in art artificially, you know, because the adults, you know, I, I was telling one of the one of the youth, I said it's too many, it's too many, un, uh, too many uh, imaginum out of their mind adults around. They set a bad example. The adults, too many of them around us, too many of them around our children. They set a bad example for the children, and so as a result, they don't, they are not formed into the mindset, and they're not formed into the Muslim identity. Especially, I'm talking about the Muslim children. They're not. They're not, they're not formed into the Muslim identity that they should be because the examples around them are not strong enough in it themselves. When you're living in America, in a place like this, your dean and your relationship with it have to be strong, have to be firm. It can't be wishy-washy. It can't be sometimes on and sometimes off, sometimes hot and sometimes cold. It can't be seasonal. They have to stay in a certain vein, or stay on a certain plane, stay on a certain way, indefinitely. If it doesn't do that, we'll be like the board, assimilated into machine-type people. Walking around with no real, no real Muslim identity. It's hard to have a Muslim identity in a non-Muslim culture if you don't make it that way. You have to do it yourself. It's not just, if you expect the election in 2020 here in November, if you expect that to have an impact on Muslim life, you're in for a rude awakening. They're interested in how Muslims live, except, it, except in the context that you're going to vote for me. Now, if you're going to vote for me, you can, you know, I've got a few things I want to tell you. But if you're not going to vote for me, I don't want it. I ain't got time for it. That's the nature of politics. So don't, we can't expect legislation to put our life in its, in, its, in, its, in its form. We have to work at it ourselves and do it. It has to be a conscious activity in your mind and in your brain to bring this al-Islam, to bring this way of life into to, to bear the fruit that it's supposed to bear in this society. You know, you hear that then on your smartphone, these smartphones are smarter than people. Now, you hear that then on them now. You can have, you can, you can, you can, you can program your phone to remind you all throughout the day of what your obligations are, so that you don't become distracted and assimilated into the bigger picture of this society and lose your Islamic nature, your Islamic form, your Muslim identity, your Muslim form. So that's my, that's always my rhetoric. It is our obligation to be in touch with what this way of life is supposed to be, how it's supposed to be, how it is to be lived. So we mentioned, we said, how many of us are ready to leave if it's time to go? How many of us are ready to transition out of this life as we are undoubtedly going to when it's time to go? And the, the, the angel of death doesn't discriminate between people. And don't die unless we're Muslim. We have to take that seriously. Not only that, but we're supposed to take everything that is in the Quran, especially that which is in the Quran, we have to take that seriously. So this Quran, we said, we stand about it. We said that it is the breath of life. We call it the breath of life. And Allah makes it clear to us in it the way it's even, even the way it's put together. What do we mean by that? The way it's choreographed. That means the way the ayat, the way the surahs are arranged. So we know that it wasn't revealed to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the context that we, we read it in. In the context that you're reading it in, you're reading it in the context that it offers the guidance that Allah meant for humanity. And it starts with its opening chapter and it says, and we call it al-Fatiha. It's the opening. And it's something. It's not only saying something, there's an 
it means that you're supposed to be open. Allah says that when he wants to bestow his grace and his favor upon a people or a person, he opens their breast to al Islam. He makes their heart, he opens them up. And so the, the first chapter in the Quran is suggesting that you be open. You be open in your mind and that you be open in your heart. To the, to what? To the revelation. And then it comes right behind that and it says, this is that book, Valley Cash stories are in place. All these chapters are in place for a reason. And then finally we get to the last chapter and it tells you what it's all about. It's about mankind. And man, you have to be open in order to, to reach the vicissitudes that humanity is to reach. You have to be open if you want to plan on getting it. And the journey through that book, through the book of Allah, that you should familiarize yourself with on a regular basis every day. There should never be a time, because you recited it, if you, if you offer five prayers a day, then you recited the Quran, right? Yeah. So you have to, that's why it's important to understand that you have to live it. You have to live this way of life. It has to be lived every day. Why is it, why does it have to be lived every day? Why do you have to do these things every day? Because it's so hard, excuse me, it's so easier, rather, to be distracted from it. There's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says there are some people who will wake up today a believer and end up tonight a disbeliever. That's suggesting that in the course of the day, you can become Catholic. Just in a little short span, from Fajr to Zuhur, you ain't careful. Tell them what might happen. From Zuhr to Asr and vice versa, go on down the line between all of those prayers. Each one is designed to bring you back to your conscious Muslim identity, your conscious Muslim self. Your intellectual self. The one that says, you know, I got I, you gotta have sense to live this life. Yeah, you have to have a degree of intelligence about you when it comes to living the Muslim life. It's not a life you're going to live haphazardly and on a whim. It's one that you have to subscribe to in the complete and in the total sense. Okay. And stop on that. In the complete and total sense, you have to let that sink in. Again, Allah says, Give Allah the proper regard, the proper consideration. Who is Allah? Who is, who is this Allah, though? Who is Allah? It's not any one of us. No one that you can imagine. Nothing that you can imagine. The one that is everywhere and in everything, but nothing is in. The one who says in this very same book that not a leaf falls anywhere off a tree unless he don't have knowledge of it says that if the oceans were ink and the trees were pens, his words couldn't be exalted. See, we can't even comprehend stuff like that. When, it, when it, you know, this, this, this is man's issue. He gets to the point where he becomes so knowledgeable, he thinks he's independent of God. Yeah, we think, we, we, we think we're independent. We think we're going we to manage this life, and we don't need a lot of help us manage it. It, does, it doesn't work like that. So our way of life is, 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 is pushing us to maturity. It's pushing us into adulthood. And in that adulthood, we are reaching back and looking into our arsenal of life's experiences. Leaving that which is right, excuse me, leaving that which is wrong for what's right. Leaving that which does not work for that which does work. Allah, he says, in the, he says also in the Quran, he says, you are the best community. Brought out for the good of all of humanity. Brought out for the good of all other people on the planet. I don't know, how, how, do you, again, how do you quantify all that? How do you quantify these things? How do you quantify, quantify these things, these teachings of the Quran and, and, the, and Muhammad? 
how do you how do you quantify all of those things? You know, one one thing for sure. If you are not familiar with them, you will never know them. How many of us know that we're already into the next lunar year? In other words, I'm saying, you know, we're already, you know, into the next year, and Ramadan is not that far away. Seven months, maybe? Less than, less than eight months, for sure. And we mentioned during, during the month of Ramadan, we said that Ramadan is the model month. That's the month that, you know, many of us read the whole Quran from cover to cover, traditionally. So we're saying, and if you're not familiar with it, if you don't keep yourself abreast of what Allah has revealed in the Quran, and who did, who did Allah reveal the Quran for? I didn't say two, I said four. Allah revealed the Quran for every human being on this earth. It is a revelation to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it is for every person on this earth to familiarize yourself with it, especially if you say you're Muslim. You are supposed to be so familiar with the Quran that you can recite it. I didn't say memorize it so much, so I, but I mean that too. We should have many, many of us should have, you know, it's not only the Nam's responsibility to memorize verses from the Quran, it's our responsibility to memorize it. And the Quran has been memorized by millions, I'll say, you know, out of the billions on this earth. There are some who have it deposited in their heart. That's how the, that's one of the ways the Quran is preserved, it's preserved on the heart of the believer. Because we're living in a world where they'll do everything that they can to suppress the word of God. They keep it down. You are, it'll, it'll make you almost indifferent to it. Oh, well, Allah said. We, Allah said. You know, and when somebody say Allah said, you're supposed to, that's supposed to get your undivided attention. Not when president said so, or imam said so and so, or sheikh said so and so, but when Allah said something, that's supposed to get your undivided attention. That's why when you hear the azan, you're supposed to be quiet. That's when you hear the khutbah, you're supposed to be quiet. You're supposed to be listening to it. If that person is speaking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I didn't say he was Allah, I said he's speaking. The khatib on Friday, he's speaking on behalf of Allah and how we're supposed to build and keep that relationship intact. Because the relationship with Allah, if that's not intact, nothing's intact. If that's not working, nothing's working. If that fails, everything fails. You think your marriage is on the rocks? Put your muscle life in order. Get it on the rocks. You think you're about to lose your job? Put your muscle life in order. If you lose it, it's just lost. Because as long as that, that muscle identity is secure, it'll make a difference what else fails. Because when you meet a lion, and that verse that we mentioned, that don't die unless you're Muslim, as long as you in that shape, the rest of it don't make a difference. Alhamdulillah, what God I mean. So, don't let ourselves be fooled into thinking that everything is all right, and if it's, if it's not. So we said, okay, so as, 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 as Muslims in this area, how, what, are we, what are we doing to solidify those needs that we have, those things that we have to have to meet our needs? We mentioned before, okay, if one of us dies, where are you going to be buried at? What funeral home are you going to go to? We don't even have, we don't have stuff like that in here. We, think, we leave that to other people for some reason. There are some things that we shouldn't leave to other people. That's one of them. How many of us are concerned about if your body, your your body is facing the kibbutz when you pass? How many of you even concerned about that? Well, how many of you even concerned about that kind of stuff? If your remains are placed in the in the in the niche in the coffin or in the ground 
and it's facing the Kibbutz. Like you're facing the Kibbutz now. Because you face facing the Kibbutz at Juma, you're looking in that direction. And it's a sign that you're supposed to always be looking in that direction, no matter whether you're alive or dead. Yeah, you're supposed to be looking in that direction, heading in that direction, no matter what the circumstances are, you're supposed to always be looking in that direction. Every day, every minute of the day, every minute of your life, that's the direction we're supposed to be looking at. <clears throat> so we're supposed to be concerned about things like that. How and what's going to happen in the event that you pass away. Knowing that we're not going to live forever. Knowing that it could happen at any point in time. How sincere are we about giving a lot of proper regard and not passing away, not dying, unless we look like how, how sincere are we about, how serious are we about that? <coughs> that's a maturity, those, are, those things, those conversations are mature, that's mature subject matter, adult subject matter, not, not, not X-rated, realism. Al Islam being Muslim means that you are you are embarking upon your adulthood and you are striving to be your most mature self, your most conscious self, your most intellectual self. We had a, a, a marriage yesterday. Oh, how many like it are I mean? Young people. You know, young people. And I reminded them that marriage is one of those institutions that we embark upon because it describes, it lets us know that we're not just plain animals and we're just not out doing anything that we want to do what we want to do. And when we say you're conscious, we're saying you're conscious of the life that you're living. And consciousness is suggesting that you're also an intellectual. Muslims are intelligent people also. We're not just people of faith, we're people of intelligence. And we strive to do everything in a way that bears witness that Allah created an intellect in this earth. And he did that when he said he was going to create Adam, that he was creating, rather, his Khalifa in the earth. His Khalifa in the earth, he said, I am do I'm doing it. It's a work in progress. He didn't say, I created him. He said, I'm creating him. So when he's doing that, he's telling us, Allah is telling us something about ourselves. So this way of life is pushing us to be mature, to be adults. Adults take on responsibility. Adults are held accountable. Adults take on responsibility, and adults are going to be held accountable. Amen. And this is one of those last stories in the Quran, it's the second from the last. It's entitled Al Salat, or the dawn or the daybreak. 
is one of those short tours, you know, the ones that many of us learn so that we can recite our prayers. Many of us, we won't want to learn, we won't want to recite something to a conductor for just, you know, a couple of days long, maybe, to try and recite. But those, some of those short ones that are in the, at the last, in the last chapters of the Quran, you know, we try to memorize those so that we can recite them in our prayers. <coughs> and as Muslims, we see the <coughs> Holy Quran that's a, it's a book that's not just, it's not simply locked up in uh, tradition or history. We believe it, that it is a, a way or a path or a revelation that will assist us and help us for the entirety of our life and for the entirety of our existence or man's existence on this earth. We don't believe that the Quran is a pastime and we don't believe that it's become irrelevant. We don't think, we don't believe that there's ever going to be a time in the history of the world and the future of the world, we never, we, there's never going to be a time when the Quran is ne is, it becomes irrelevant. It will always be relevant. Yeah, just, you have to stop and think about that. It's going to always be relevant. The story is one of those stories that starts with school and faith. And we mentioned before that when we're asked to say something, it's, it's also in like, you know, we believe it, you know. You know don't just, don't just uh, read it, say it. So it's fool, say it. Because when you say something, there's a strong possibility that you believe in it, that you believe it. And when we're asked to keep, you know, when we say something, it's expected that we keep our word. They remind you, you know, because I have folks, they always remind you, yeah, well, you said you was going to give me that money. <laughs> they remind you what you said. And they expect you to keep your word if you said it. So here's, a, here's one of those stories, and it's one of the fools. They say it's the four fools. You know, it's, it's more than one, more than four. Sorry, that. This is one of those four. <clears throat> and so here Allah says this. We're to say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the day breaks, when the day breaks. And we mentioned during Ramadan, we mentioned during Ramadan that there's the story called the night of power. It says in there, and peace it is until the rising of the dawn. Peace it is. So it's talking about the peace that we, ha that, that we have when it's darkness and when it's nighttime. And when the day breaks, we start to take on what's going on in the day, in the light. When it becomes light outside, when the day comes, you know, we get active. We mentioned that if you, you become so active, you can become so engrossed in what you're doing, that if you're not careful, before the day is gone, you could be gone. Your Islam could be gone. So we're supposed to pour our ubuli rab in the felak. I seek reference in the Lord of the dawn. In other words, when, I'm, when it's dawning on me that I'm coming into a degree of consciousness, I, I, you have to seek the protection of Allah that you don't become overwhelmed by something. And it goes on and it says from the, from the mischief of created things. That's what the translator says. From the mischief of created things. In other words, it's harm in created things. If you don't approach it right, it can become harmful to you. It's like electricity. It works good, light the room up, but boy, you go in there and mess up the wire, it's gonna be some trouble. So we're supposed to seek protection, refuge in Allah from the things that are, that if we don't approach them right, because Allah knows that if we don't approach a thing right, it's gonna be trouble. From the mischief, of, it says, of darkness as it overspread. Now, you know, we mentioned about this culture that we live in. It's, this is, this is Jackie Lee of society. This is gross darkness that we're living in here. 
Anytime something comes in and puts a puts a cloud over the over your Muslim life, makes your Muslim life harder to live. Yeah, it makes your makes your life as a Muslim difficult to live. Then you have to seek refuge in Allah from them. And from the mischief of those who practice secret arts, and from the mischief of the envious one as he practices envy. So, you know, now that means to split or to pierce through. So we're supposed to seek protection of Allah from the evil. We're supposed to seek protection of Allah from created things, from the evil, from those who practice secret arts, the mystics, and the envious ones. You know that your Muslim, your Muslim life is a, is a life to envy? The more, the more good that you try to do, the more you try to be Muslim, you know that there's a force equally out there trying to upset that. They say the greater the greater the, the truth, the greater the resistance against it. The more you try to be in your right frame of mind, your right context, the more you will find opposition against it. That's why they say it's lonely at the top. The more you try to be right, the less friends you'll have, the less likes you'll get. Yeah, the more the more the more you try to you you just take just just test it. Go and go around people and, and try to be right. And see how many friends you lose. Just, just I mean I mean bar none right, period. Don't accept anything but right. If they say something out there, just you know, check them, and I guarantee you, your 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 pool of resources, your pool of people will go down. So there are people who envy your Muslim life. They don't think that they won't do something to upset it. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. So we're to seek refuge in Allah from these things. And we mentioned that the last surah in the Quran and last. It is a surah, it's a, a surah, surah also. And it's asking, it says, to, to say, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind. Who will be Rebbein in that? To say it, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, of all humanity. <clears throat> now, again, they think out there and have to say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn, and I seek refuge in the Lord of all of humanity. They're not there just to be there. I seek refuge in the Lord of humanity, the one who, he says, and he says, the God of humanity, right? Elahin the, the one that is the, the God, the object of worship for humanity. I seek refuge in that one. Manikin man, the king, that one. I seek refuge in that one. Yeah, this, so we're supposed to, those things are supposed to mean something to us. And, I, and that's what we're saying. Let this, let this Quran mean something to you. Don't never let yourself get away from it in the course of your day. Make yourself, make yourself, familiarize yourself with it on a daily basis. I, I, don't, I don't miss a morning. Me and my, I got my youngest ones, we read the Quran every morning. We don't miss a morning. Every morning, I guarantee you. Even if they don't feel good, I go, well, just, just, just read a section then. Because uh, I want to keep them familiar with the Quran. Because they're children. And it's our job, it's the, adult, it's the job of adults to set the example for the children. That's our business. That's our job. That's our work. That should be our life. So we thank Allah, and we want to mention that Imam Mukman, his brother, passed away this week. 
younger brother. So he's in Philadelphia right now. So inshallah, we pray for him and his family. Brother Yusuf, he lost his son a few weeks, uh, two weeks ago. You know, so we have some deaths in the in the community. And sometimes, you know, we we don't we don't, we don't uh, pay attention to the person that's going through that. You know, you know sometimes, you know, people, you know, they they try to keep it down, but you know, a lot of a lot of you know people be hurt. We don't know what someone's going through in the course of their day. So we should always be nice and kind to people, and remember. Remember that this is really about keeping your human form, keeping your human identity, keeping your human disposition as a Muslim. That's what this way of life is all about. We say it is for the mature, it's for those who are being going to be held responsible, accountable as adults. Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Kama salaika ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إن تحمد المجيد على آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله
Um, just a reminder, every Tuesday and Saturday, we have a free food pantry, and, you know, we help feed the community with this pantry, so your help helps us provide the food that we, that we give out. You know, we went shopping, um, I believe it was this past Wednesday at the Northwestern Food Bank.